Hello, friends, and welcome. Uh, today, we have a very important conversation. We are continuing our discussion of vaccination in our community and uh, questions and learning that our faith communities are doing around the COVID-19 vaccine. We are here with my good friend, Imam Mohammed Majid, who is the executive Imam of all Dulles area Muslim Society Center in Sterling, Virginia. He is also the chairman of the International Interfaith Peace Corps and the former president of the Islamic Society of North America. Uh, Imam Majid, there is also a list of way too many uh, organizations and uh, honors that you have. And so I definitely encourage people to read more about your bio. And as we launch into this conversation today, uh, Adams is such an important place, not only to its many members, but to faith leaders of many different communities around the country. And I wanted to ask if you could tell us a little bit about your community. First of all, I'd like to thank you, Rabbi Julie, for uh, being together on this uh, recording. Um, uh, we have worked together in many interfaith events and activities. Um, Adam Center, uh, which is stands for All Dallas Area Muslim Society, uh, is one of the largest uh, mosques in, in America. Uh, and it has about 5,000 families. We have like seven branches uh, across the metropolitan area, Washington metropolitan area. And we're a very diverse community. If you come on, uh, on Friday, uh, after COVID, please, <laughs> you know, after always being vaccinated and, and it'll be very safe to come. Um, you can see the, the, the whole globe in it. What I mean by that in terms of ethnicities and cultural background, uh, we have people from all the corner of the world uh, in that mosque. And we, are, we, uh, we have uh, one of the largest uh, scouting, boy scouting, girl scouting uh, troops in the area. We're very proud of that. And we do have uh, many uh, programs, including a community clinic. We do provide uh, health care for those who cannot afford uh, health care, don't have health insurance for all the all people. It's not for only Muslims, but people of other faith as well. And, and we have um, uh, the uh, health care department that does all the kind of seminars and health awareness and, and, and training. Wow. So that leads us into uh, sort of the heart of what we're going to talk about today. I definitely would like our listeners and our readers to be able to learn more about the point of view of Islam on vaccination. Uh, but before we go to vaccination, could you start a little bit by teaching us about the Islamic point of view on health, uh, both from a personal point of view and also a community point of view? Um, Islam put a lot of emphasis in the well-being of human being. In matter of fact, the higher objective of Islamic law is to preserve and protect human life. Mm -hmm. This is one of the highest objectives. And Muslim scholars have written books on this uh, on this issue. Myself, I have a paper and called The Theology of Life. Uh, the idea here is that the human being, uh, life is being honored by God, and we have to consider every human being life as a precious uh, creations of God Almighty. And the issue of preventing harm in human life it's one of the highest objectives of Islamic law and teaching as well. Therefore, we look to human being in, in a holistic manner, um, mental, physical, and spiritual. Mm -hmm. And we uh, address this issue in our, on our mosque. We have mental health uh, professionals, department actually deal with these issues. Uh, we have fitness programs and uh, health program. Actually, the, one of the biggest room in our mosque is the basketball court. Uh, and then we have the spiritual aspect of it was the teaching uh, you know, of forgiveness and acceptance and patience and compassion and empathy, all of this aspect of it. Therefore, we do uh, have programs The Adams address all the aspects of, of human life, but we do uh, spend a lot of uh, resources and, and time 
in addressing the issue of mental health and physical health uh, by having a clinic, as I said before, that meant to provide help and uh, for counseling and, and physical help. And we have mental health counselors as well uh, in, at Adams Center. So that's, that is very fascinating to learn. And in, in light of that, what is the uh, history of writings about vaccination in Islam? Yes, uh, Muslims uh, actually uh, through the history have done uh, what called the preventive medicine mm -hmm. to meant to uh, protect people from getting, getting sick. And uh, a matter of fact, uh, you know, when if you look at the history of Islam, that are the Muslims in, in the, you know, uh, the, well, among the first people actually to believe in the idea of vaccination. Um, unfortunately, that later people associated vaccine with the, um, uh, the elements of colonization, the, as in America, African American community that associated with the uh, the uh, not not the best medical practice uh, that have been you know been used as uh, a guinea pig, uh, uh, you know, but uh, in Islam, the the idea of preventing uh, harms came from the following: the, the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. He said, if there's any contagious disease, you should not enter that city where where where, where there's a contagious disease, nor leaving leaving it, so don't spread it. That means if you are not entering it, you prevent yourself from getting sick. If you are in the city or you have uh, contracted that uh, sickness, you should not go and spread it. Uh, that means that you should uh, uh, immune yourself, protect yourself from not entering the city, also immune other people from not contracting from you. That, that a theology uh, of Muslim, Muslim scholars said this is uh, the, the foundation, theological point, uh, foundation for vaccination. Because when you vaccine, when you uh, being vaccinated and use a vaccine and you in really have created an immune system or a prevention from spreading the, the sickness to others. You, pro you, pro you protect yourself, but also you stop it from spreading to others. That's uh, very, very powerful uh, and, you know, incredible wisdom. And you, you mentioned something, too, which is, you know, we have a complicated history in the world, in our country and in the world. And uh, people do raise serious concerns based on some terrible historical episodes, Tuskegee, for example. Um, and how do you help people who are grappling, right, with those painful pieces of history and worrisome pieces of history based on, you know, what learning have you been able to do about this vaccine? You know, what study you've been able to do? What facts can you help bring people so they can put that history in perspective but understand this vaccine opportunity clearly? First of all, is more transparency than ever before. There's nothing that a person does or, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> attempt to do is not being watched. Uh, but I would like to say that we have very trusted people, African-American, Muslims, uh, you know, you have two Muslims uh, scholars participating in creating this vaccine, <laughs> you know, and it, it, it's all over the news. Um, the And you have the, uh, um, uh, leaders from uh, faith communities, uh, from ethnic communities, have made sure that to ask all difficult questions during this process. Therefore, we have all our question, questions have been answered. Uh, very satisfying, actually, uh, answers. This is uh, safe. This is meant to be for everybody to uh, protect oneself and to protect others. And therefore, there's no doubt in my mind, I just want to say that to emphasize that, there's no doubt in my mind that this process now, with all of the science, with all of the effort, with all the, uh, the uh, due diligence, is the most safe process. And therefore, we should 
not have any doubt in our heart about the benefit uh, of this vaccine uh, to ourselves and to others. Imam, when we were just getting on the phone, I think you mentioned to me that uh, the uh, regulation is recently changed in the state of Virginia, where Adams yes. is located, and that clergy have been put on the list of people who will soon become eligible for the vaccine. And if I am correct, you are, are have put your name on the list to receive the vaccine yourself. Absolutely. I put my name on the list and waiting. And uh, my colleague also in, in the mosque, uh, the other imams, we will go together and we're going to have it on camera that we had taken the vaccine. So the, no doubt to anyone, this is safe to take. And uh, and in a, a thank you. So I, and I, I look forward to that day. I look forward uh, to the day when we can all be vaccinated. And I, I want to look for that picture when it comes. <laughs> And also in terms of it being halal, I, I, I know that you are a very significant scholar. Can you tell, tell me what you know about uh, the vaccine vis-a-vis -vis halal status? Yeah, uh, some questions have been raised about the vaccine uh, that whether the ingredients of it from the religious perspective and religious diet is acceptable to be taken. And I would like to say to everybody, from the Islamic perspective, we have two major Islamic Scholars Council in America. We have studied this, have uh, learned about all the ingredients in it, and they come with the conclusion, it is halal, it is lawful, there's nothing wrong of taking it, nor uh, it is any doubt in any aspect of it to be harmful to your body. Let me tell you uh, something about this issue that the Muslim scholars, they saying that by taking the vaccine, you actually get reward by God Almighty for preventing harm happen to others. Because remember, there's a verse in the Holy Quran as well in the Old Testament, if you save one life, as if you have saved a life of all humanity. Mm -hmm. uh, and this vaccine is meant to save your life, save my life, but also saving other people's life. Therefore, by doing so, you're doing the most honorable act of worship. The most uh, sacred act of worship is protecting people's life. So, you know, I, I wonder if you're hearing uh, anything about this that is very inspiring. And of course, uh, as you correctly point out, Judaism has that teaching as well, that to save one life, it is, it is as if you saved the whole world. Yes. And, um, you know, I'm hearing from from people who are working in, in healthcare facilities, obviously hospitals, healthcare facilities, that is where healthcare workers uh, have been the first to be eligible to receive the vaccine. And uh, there are, I, I'm hearing that one of the challenges that some healthcare facilities are facing is that people who work there who are, you know, young and healthy themselves, right, they are still sort of reluctant, you know, the, the numbers are kind of uneven, still reluctant to get the vaccine because they feel like uh, that they'll, they will mask and, and that they also, they themselves are young and don't feel uh, at great risk of becoming very ill. Have you encountered anything like that? Has anybody come to you with that dilemma? Yes, I, uh, I have spoken to uh, young people who they think that maybe I don't need it because I'm young and even if I get it, then I will get over it and so forth. But they, uh, there's misinformation there because we have young people lost their life in their thirties and you know, uh, from this uh, COVID-19. Therefore, don't risk it at all, number one. Number two, you have to remember, especially those who are living with family members that may be at risk. It's not all about you. Don't only think about yourself. Think about the elderly person that you meet in the grocery store. Think about the elderly person that maybe family members that you meet in social gathering. Think about people who might have a compromised immune system. Think about those people. And there's a teaching of Islam from the saying of the prophet peace upon him. He said, no one, will have true faith 
until he or she love for others, love for others what they love for themselves. Therefore, it is about caring about others. We cannot about me, me, me. We have to think about others as well to this process. Hmm. You know, over and over again, of course, what, I, what I'm hearing in the teachings uh, is, you know, how many similarities that from teachings that we have in Judaism, from teachings that I've learned, these very important principles of how we live together with others, how we care for others. And so if I may, I want to spend a few minutes on the spiritual, emotional uh, aspects of what the pandemic means to people. There are a lot of people who are not, uh, have not physically contracted COVID, but are nonetheless living um, with a lot of anxiety, a lot of isolation. Mm -hmm. uh, many people have suffered serious financial or career setbacks. And I, I'd love to hear a little bit and for our listeners and readers to hear a little bit about uh, your wisdom on some of those issues and what we can do to help each other and to strengthen ourselves. Yeah, this have not, uh, past year has not been a, an easy year. Uh, myself, uh, I've been called uh, by various uh, members of communities. Uh, because either their loved one had been uh, sick, contracted the COVID-19, or they have lost their loved one. And one of the most difficult thing in this past year is that uh, people couldn't visit their loved one in the hospital, and some of them couldn't even be there when they've been buried. And, and therefore, we counsel those people. And it's not an easy... Uh, event in personal life to see the loved one passing without them being there beside their bed. And also many members of the community, they want to attend funerals of the people whom they love, but they couldn't because of COVID-19. I know some people have lost their jobs, you know, and they went in financial difficulty and hardship. For all of those people, I would say that, you know, life is full of events and, and tests. And there's so many transitions in life. But we as a community, and when I say the community, I'm talking about the community at large, Muslims, Christians, Jews, Hindu, Baha'is, Buddhist, we have to uh, remember that um, when we show our neighbor that we care about them. When we share our resources by buying extra grocery so that we can give it to the food bank, by giving a call to somebody feel isolated, feel lonely, uh, we are really showing the best of our religion, best of our faith, compassion, care, empathy. You know, I'm a very optimistic person in general. I, I believe that we shall overcome this, but still there's memory that will be with us for years to come. Of those members of our community we lost within weeks from their sickness, but also people will be recovering from their financial difficulties and so forth and so on but we have to have each other back. We have to protect one another. We have to be there for each other. You know, um, there's a, a saying in Islam and something similar to it in Christianity in Matthew, uh, and, and I think also in Judaism, that by caring about others as if you have been in the presence of God when God received this service from you. In Islam, the God says, I was sick, you didn't visit me. I was poor, you didn't help me. And the person said to God, oh God Almighty, you are the king of the kings. How could you become poor and you become sick? And he said, don't you know so-and-so were sick? If you are checked on them, you have checked on me. If you have helped the poor person, you have helped me. Those are the principles that make faith meaningful. And that's why um, uh, I, I don't think me personally, uh, I will be the same 
in terms of the transformation happened to me during this time. I come to realize that all the theology I believed of humanity being one, one family come to play. I've seen it. The rich and the poor, both of them contracted COVID-19. And the powerful countries and the country don't have that much means, all of them become vulnerable. Humanity have been exposed to the real essence of it, which is we are one family, regardless of social status, regardless of power that you might uh, hold, all of you become vulnerable. And that is a lesson that we should, from now on, have to do with, with us. By protecting one person in the different corner of the world, we're protecting ourselves. We are one body. If part of it ache, the rest should respond to his fever. And that was the, this one of the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He said, humanity like one body, if any part of it ache, the rest should supposed to respond to his fever. Uh, I, I agree with you, by the way. I feel also like uh, that this has been a time of very profound change, uh, that we come to sort of understand our relation to the community differently. And we come to understand, I think, certainty and uncertainty differently. Right, a lot of people have said that they have to live with a lot more uncertainty. So Imam, as always, uh, it is so inspiring and uh, so rewarding to spend time studying with you. You teach from such uh, both compassion and learning. And so we should uh, perhaps come towards uh, closing our conversation, although everything you just said would <laughs> would be a perfect uh, closing. I want, though, to invite you. Is there any other message or piece of information or advice that you would like to share uh, with people? I want people to trust their health officials, not to trust rumors, to trust their clergy in their neighborhood, not to trust anyone else, and to understand that, you know, uh, people have the best interest in heart, especially the local hospital, local health officials and so forth. And please listen to those guidelines. Don't listen to anyone else. That's one thing. The second thing is I want to say, uh, it's been comforting to me that um, I been hearing from my colleague, rabbi, pastors, comforting me during this time. And I know, uh, you know, I have a lot of joy working with you. Uh, you know, we are colleagues as clergy. And, and the amount of support I got from my fellow clergy was amazing this time. And sometimes I get a text from a rabbi just checking on me. I check on him or her. And then I get a, I, 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 you know, a, a call from a pastor to say, just wants to check on you to say, how are you doing? And so that is really uh, show the best of America. The best of America in this compassion and caring about one another and overcoming any kind of differences that you may have. And this is a difficult time that where you need to stick together. Please, every one of us should be in the first line of vaccination. We need the, all of us to be one strong nation that being vaccinated through, again, it's COVID-19, again, it's racism, <laughs> discrimination, hatred. Uh, let's do it. Well, those are beautiful words and inspiring words uh, with which we could only add salam and shalom. Yes. for you as well. Thank you so much, Baba Julie, for in interviewing me and have this conversation with me. Thank you. God bless you.